Did you know that the weight of your average human brain is approximately 1.4 kilograms? That's 1,400 grams. What if I told you that one little part of your brain weighing just 4 grams, or just one third of a percentage of your brain, is a vital epicenter for your hormone production, behavioural patterns, and involuntary or subconscious body functions? It's the part of your brain that helps tell you when you're hungry, or when you need to stop eating, when you're thirsty, or perfectly hydrated, when you're sleepy, or perhaps chiefly wide awake. Tells you when you're feeling chirpy or just plain grumpy. When you're feeling all loved up or just not in the mood. It's also responsible for releasing your inner beastly rage that you never knew you had. Setting off your internal panic alarms when you're getting stressed. And even getting you pumped to fight an approaching enemy. This structure that I'm talking about here is none other than your hypothalamus. This small structure right here, which packs a mega punch when it comes to controlling your hormone production, bodily functions and behaviour. But don't let the relatively small size of the hypothalamus deceive you. Being involved in so many processes comes with a price, and that price is complexity. Yes, the hypothalamus is going to be one of the trickiest topics for you to learn in your neuroanatomy course. But don't worry, we're KenHub, which means we love to help. I hope you're adequately caffeinated right now, because you're probably going to need it as we explore the hypothalamus. So let's waste no time and get started with this tutorial. So we're going to begin with an introduction to some of the basic principles helpful to know when studying the hypothalamus. As a part of this introduction, we're going to be exploring the anatomic landmarks surrounding the area of the hypothalamus, and we'll also introduce you to the anatomic subdivisions of the hypothalamus, which is an approach of breaking down the hypothalamus into distinct compartments, which will hopefully help us when learning all about its many nuclei in more detail. And finally, later on, we'll explore some basic information on the white matter tracts associated with the region of the hypothalamus. So let's begin our discussion of the landmarks in and around the hypothalamus. This will help you better localise the region of the hypothalamus when looking at radiology pictures or gross specimens. First of all, we should point out that we're looking at a mid-sagittal section of the brain with the hypothalamus highlighted in green. It belongs to a greater region of the brain known as the diencephalon, or the interbrain, and this region is highlighted in a different colour. Now, for those of you who may be unfamiliar with the major landmarks of the medial view of the brain, don't worry, we're going to be presenting the most important of these here in this section, but if you'd like a more thorough understanding of all the anatomy here, you might like to watch our video on the medial view of the brain. So to cover these structures briefly, let's group all the surrounding structures into four regions, superior, inferior, anterior, and posterior. And these directions can also be classified as dorsal, ventral, rostral, and caudal, respectively. Superior to the hypothalamus, we're going to find the thalamus, the choroid plexus, the fornix, and the corpus callosum. Inferior to the hypothalamus, we're going to find the optic chiasm, the pituitary stalk and gland, and the mammillary body. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.